Professional services clients have access to the full version of the relative rotation graphs, which allows you to script for certain conditions. Now, RRGs were developed by Julius de Kempenar and is a great way to visualize relative strength of a portfolio or a universe of stocks relative to a benchmark. So there's lots of information on our website and on the uh, internet as a whole. So search for relative rotation graphs to get a better understanding of the concept behind it. But um, in this example, I've got a watch list here and I'm going to click the open list as and I'm going to select open RRG. So this is what a relative rotation graph looks like. There's about 110 stocks in this, so it's a little bit messy. But basically, there's a benchmark in the middle and all the stocks tend to rotate around this benchmark in a clockwise direction where leading is the top right uh, quadrant, weakening bottom right, lagging uh, bottom left and improving uh, top left. And uh, so using the scripting language, we can um, script on any of the values used to calculate uh, these arrows. So for example, I'm just going to mouse over uh, that arrow there and you'll see that the label pops up um, with all those values. So ratio and momentum is the x and y axis of the RRG and we've got angles, distance from the uh, from the middle. Uh, I'll show you an example on how we can use that in a minute and also the, the quadrant value and the the heading which is the direction of the of the arrows. So they're the popular ones um, on which we can script for. So um, let me make a column in this watch list. So new script column. And uh, for RRGs, if we type RRG, it tells us RRG lines use JDK RS. So that's the, that's the function that we need to use. So JDK RS and using the dot notation, these are the various outputs available. So in this example, I'm going to choose quadrant and by default, this is a list of US stocks. Uh, by default, it knows that they're from the US, so it's going to use the S&P 500 index as the benchmark index. If you open up a list of the FTSE 100, it will be the FTSE index. Um, Australian stocks will be the XJO. Um, but you can, you can click um, inside the uh, parentheses to bring up the properties. And the um, comparison index, if left blank, it will go to the default but we could put in anything in there, um, another stock or, or another index that you want to use. So I'm just going to um, leave it as the SPX. So when I hit apply, it's going to fill in that column with whichever uh, quadrant um, is applicable. So AAL is in the leading quadrant, so it'll be over here somewhere. Whereas, um, uh, let's see, A. KAM, that's an easy one to find. Um, that's also in the leading. So if we go down here into the watch list, you can see it says uh, leading quadrant. Now that's on a daily basis. We can change the RRG to weekly, so the longer time frame. Roll the mouse wheel to zoom out. And as you've probably seen in earlier videos, we can set the, uh, the time frame of uh, a script column. By default, it will be um, daily, but we can change the time frame to week and that fills in the text and we can apply that and the column will be uh, uh, updated. So you can have a daily column, you can have a weekly column. You can put the values in of the ratio and the momentum um, and you can also put in the distance. So the um, basically the further away you are from the benchmark, uh, which is 100, so that's in the middle. If we zoom in this 100 ratio and 100 momentum, the closer you are to that, the closer you are to the benchmark. So to get more alpha or to get more um, returns, you want to be further away from the benchmark. So that's why distance is important. And that's calculated using Pythagorean theorem and, and, and uh, the, the formula for that. But we can use that um, in a column. So I'm going to right click, edit column. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it to weekly, but instead of quadrant, um, I'm going to do distance. Um, uh, hang on, oh, it's because I've changed the the, uh, um, the text. So instead of 
I can select distance from inside of there. So now I'm going to get a value in that column. And watch list columns can be grouped into um, a number of uh, um, groups. So we can group by number, decile, quartile, etc. So I'm going to do um, decile. So there's about 100 stocks here. So the bottom 10 will appear at the top and we can collapse that group and I'm going to label this script so we know what it is so distance so if we right click in the gray header bar in the column that we want to summarize uh, go to summary type and we can type average so now when we collapse um, those groups so the average uh, closest is, is only 0 0.8 but the furthest away are in the 10th decile, an average of, of 20 away from the, from the center. So we can expand that group. Let me close that RRG on the screen in a moment. So these are the ones that are furthest away on a weekly basis. So I can open, uh, click on the open uh, uh, list and then open the RRG. Now, this column is based on weekly. By default, it will open up a daily RRG, but we can change, change that. Um, up the top there and you can see that these are the the 10 furthest away from that from the benchmark for that universe of stocks let's show you a couple of scans now so search is scanning manager so let's say we want a, a scan on a, on a universe that uh, that show me where the, the, the quadrant changes so the arrow or the stock moves into a quadrant so um, again JDK RS. Now the values for the quadrants, it's zero is leading, one is weakening, two is lagging, and three is improving. So we can um, do dot quadrant and the operator we can use is change two. So when it changes to zero, it means that the previous day it wasn't in zero and today it is. So it's, it's crossed over uh, into that quadrant. So we can we can apply that. I'm going to scan on the S&P 500 stocks for yesterday. So when I execute scan, that's going to run through. There were 19 that moved into the leading quadrant. So I can export open results as open RRG. And I'll just drag that up into its own tab. And you, you can see um, that, it, in fact, that was the case. So this is a, uh, I, I did this on, on daily values so that each dot is one day, so uh, these tails are five days long. So the previous dot, so yesterday it was outside of uh, quadrant zero, which is leading, and today it's in. So um, we can see the path. We can drag the, the left-hand side of the history slider, and as we drag it to the left, the tails get longer. So you can see the path that those stocks have taken, or you can physically see the rotation um, Put your cursor inside of that shaded area so that it turns into four bars and as you oh sorry four arrows and as you drag left each arrow is still five days in length but you can see the rotation as it moves into that um, that leading quadrant one final scan i'll show you is the direction of the arrows so if we mouse over we get a um a label pops up and you can see heading there in this example for EQT it's 101 degrees so it's based on a um, so zero is zero degrees is 12 o'clock um, 90 degrees is three o'clock uh, 180 is six o'clock and 270 is nine o'clock so if you visualize that on a clock face you'll see that uh, um, those uh, that's what the heading value represents so if with a heading of 90 degrees means it's going um, exactly um, to the right at three o'clock. So we can scan on those on those uh, those values because the direction of the arrow can give us clues about what may uh, be about to happen. So searches, scanning manager. I can just edit this one. Um, so dot heading. So. I'm going to do crosses above 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is um, northeast. So it's a heading in the towards the top right.
corner, which is the leading quadrant. So type crosses above and then 45 degrees. Hit apply and then execute scan. Now I'm not specifying what quadrant these are in, so it could be in, I, I could add that. I could, I could say and quadrant equals one or, or for example, but uh, this, this will be in, in any quadrant. So I can now open results as RRG and all these arrows, you can see a heading in the top right corner, which is where we want it to go uh, um, towards the towards the leading quadrant. So um, so now that if, if we save this, again, I'm going to drag this up into its own tab. So we've got two RRG scans here. So this is the quadrant change. This one is the uh, 45 degrees. So we can double click on the tab there, give it a name, 45 degree. And now this is, um, we, we save this as a workbook. When we come back tomorrow and open this um, chart back up, it's linked to the scan. So um, it will, if we click on the properties there, it will say um, link to list and, and the list to use is the, is the scan. So it will rerun that 45 degree scan and a new, um, a, a new RRG or will be will be created similarly with the quadrant change the uh, the list will be updated based on the, uh, the the new data that came in at the end of the day so it's not you don't have to um, it's like a watch list um, that updates automatically the same happens with the RRG so it's um, it's a dynamic dynamically linked to the scan you don't have to manually run the scan again it will automatically populate based on the new data